All right, we're back. And we are heading into the transfer gate. Let's go to the Padarea estate. Ah, you've come, Mel. Well then, let's head out right away. Okay. All right, we're on another little floating island here. Wow. I'll lead the way. Come with me. Oh, I completely forgot. I haven't explained to you about my aunt yet, have I? My aunt Marone is the wife of my uncle Padre, who is my father's younger brother. Uh, since we lost our mother quite young, she often played with us, and to me she is... like an older sister who's a little further apart in age. Hey Zahi! Welcome, how's it going? When I was still very young, Aunt Morone used to play with me a lot in this yard. At that time, Quard was also with us. From time to time, our uncle would play with us too. When those times came, Ford would inevitably pester our uncle to uh, train swordsmanship with him. What? so cute. That cord, whenever he won against our uncle, he never realized that uh, our uncle was going easy on him and he was so delighted. It's such a, a silly one. Ordinarily, you'd think that the uh, role of being a sword opponent for a young boy would fall to his father, right? But our father never had time for Cord or myself, and it was forbidden for us to come here to play. Oh no. What, what was that? I'm worried about my aunt. Let's go see what's going on. And let's quickly go see what's going on. Oh, 
Okay, well... Much as I want to take a look around... Uh, I, I'm worried that once we go inside I won't get a chance to look around. So I'm going to now, even though I feel bad about it. Dragon hide. Okay, and then that's just the transfer gate over there. There's not going to be anything else. Yeah. Okay. Let's go! Whoa, what happened? Run, Mereade. It's dangerous here. Oh, not another one of these. Mistress Marone, hurry! And Marone returns. You need to run too. Don't stand still. Don't worry about me. Just go. She's got a baby. Keep the baby safe. Oh! Mereare! Run! Before it wakes up! Oh no, there's multiple. And that one took off after him. Oh no. Two of those monsters. My aunt told me to turn back, but... It's no good. Even if I went to call for help, I really don't think they would make it in time. Let's go save my aunt. And the others. Okay, uh, so they all went into the east side. How do I get upstairs? The chandelier is blocking. Okay. Okay, there's a door on each side. Um, once again, I'm very sorry to everyone, but I am going to investigate the other side first. It'll be okay. 
I really appreciate during that cutscene how you got to see a bunch of the uh, battle master techniques in in a fight as and how they work. Nothing in here. What about upstairs? Because it also looks like this will connect to the other side of. mansion from up here. This is... Uh, Mel looked at the bookshelves. Uh, among the collection of books, almost everything was about politics or imperial studies. But there was one volume among them that was about childcare. Okay. I mean, I guess that's understandable because there's a baby in the house. Okay. Oh, if you wanted to jump down, which I guess. Oh no, I should have tried to do this before. Mel tried to open the door. Something is getting in the way of it opening and you can't get in. It looks like this way is no good. But we should be able to get to the western wing of the estate from the opposite side. If we take the long way around and take the connecting hallway on the second floor, we can go after my aunt. Sorry, everyone. Let's do that again. I'm not sure if Mediarde can fight. Okay. It figured that the game would have something in place so that there's only one way you could really go. Oh, I wanna... I miss the doors every time. What's this? It's a, it's a bedroom. But it doesn't say whose. Oh, but there's a... There's a cradle, so it must be the parents' room. Nothing interesting in the bookshelves. Okay, so they came this way. They must have gone downstairs. What is... oh. This is what's blocking the way. And if you're curious enough to come over here, you get five mini medals. What's this? Uh, servant's room. Oh, there's a book on the table. Looks to be a book that's in the middle of being written? Sitting on top of the table. Okay. Alright. Maybe that will be important later. really only one way to go. Oh, that's so cool. Ah, uh, there's a shield-shaped uh, 
decoration that's placed here. It's so neat. Oh no. Oh yes. One of them lost its horn. Please take the child. Mr. Smolone. Mr. Smolone, hang in there. Can you hear me? Please answer. Aunt, don't, don't tell me. Is my aunt okay? What happened? Mistress Mereade? Or Miss Mereade? He's just using Sama with her. Why? More importantly, let's focus on my aunt's condition. She doesn't appear to be injured, but... That's true. But no matter how many times I call, she doesn't open her eyes. How could this be? We have to get her back to the palace without a moment to lose and have the palace physician take a look at her. Oh, the baby's crying. Uh, um, the young lady is all right. Hey, Mel, we're gonna carry my aunt to my room, so help us, please. Mel and the others left the Padorea estate behind and carried Morone to Mariade's private room at the Eterne Palace. Don't worry, young lady. You're by your mother's side. None of the medicines that I have at hand are having any kind of effect. 
What about alternate methods of treatment? No, with her condition like this, there's no choice but to wait for her to awaken naturally. Right now, we have no choice but to believe in Moroni's own healing ability. But that's... What would I say to Lord Padre? Mel, please go with that person. I'll come after you as soon as I've talked to the doctor. Call you were that foreigner that was together with Cord. This is the center of the sacred Eterne kingdom. We can't just have some foreigner of unknown identity wandering around the place. Hmm. So you've returned. It has been a while, Master Domineus. No, Your Majesty. Please allow me to report in regarding the unknown whereabouts of His Majesty, your younger brother, at a later time. Are you still searching for him? That's pointless. He's already dead. Having been caught up in such a great catastrophe, there's no way that he could still be alive. But I survived. I'm sure that my master, Lord Padre, is also- Hey, what's going on here? Why are you raising your voices? This is, uh, Mediarde talking. Father, this is rare for you to come here. I heard, Mediarde, that you went into the Padarea estate while a monster was attacking. Yes, and as a result, we were able to rescue my Aunt Marone. You fool! It is outrageous that the Princess of the Eterne Kingdom would forget about her position and throw herself into danger. Our subjects must be guided to choose the correct future. That is the responsibility of the royal family, or it is the responsibility of the royal family to continue on the bloodline for posterity into the future. It seems that you are lacking in self-awareness for what the royal family is. Please speak clearly. No matter what you say about what the royal family's duty is, in the end, what you don't didn't like was that I went to my aunt's house. Isn't that correct? 
You may hate my uncle, but don't push that onto his child as well. You are not to take one step outside this room until you have my permission. Do you understand, Meriade? Your Majesty, please pardon me for being pushy, but to raise a hand to your daughter is one of low standing such as yourself will not speak of what happens within the royal chambers. And concerning my foolish dead younger brother, you need not search for him further. Princess, shall I bring something cool for your face? It's all right. This isn't... this is nothing. Where are you going? Going to get some air. My father saying things like one of low standing such as you and that Uncle Padre is dead throwing his words out like thorns. He's so heartless. He said he was going to get some air. I wonder if that means he went to the terrace. I'm kind of worried. And now, you don't need to worry about me, but please go check how things are on the terrace, would you? Okay, well, we know where the terrace is at least. And if you'd forgotten, there's someone here to tell you, hey, the terrace is right here. This is where we need to go, right? Doesn't seem to be anything here. There we go, though. You are? Now that I think about it, we've been through a lot together and I still haven't introduced myself. Oh yes, I am also very angry at the king right now. I mean, he was a strict jerk before in the th throne room, but yeah, no, no one is going to get forgiven for what he just did. Uh, where was I? I am called Ferris. I am neither a soldier of the Eterne military nor a, a servant of the royal palace. I am a servant of Lord Padre, who I have sworn my one and only allegiance to. And he is the younger brother of His Majesty Domineus. And you are? 
a melt old Ferris her name. I see. Mel is your name. What was that look for? When Lord Padre went as an ambassador to the seaside capital of Dinjahal, I accompanied him. However, at Dinjahal, an unimaginable disaster struck and I was separated from Lord Padre. Of course I searched for him. I went through all the rubble of the destroyed town. But I wasn't able to find him. I returned after a long time to report in, and then that monster began rampaging through the estate. I was there and I couldn't protect Mistress Marone. I'm not fit to face Lord Padre. But how in the world did that a monster like that infiltrate the estate that was floating in midair? You ignored the king's command and left your room. <laughs> this is fine. Or it's okay doing just this much. A certain someone had such a dark look on his face when he left that I became worried. Thought you might have jumped off or something. You jest. I, Ferris, would not think of such a weak-willed thing. What's that? It's the horn of that monster that was rampaging in the estate. It looked to me as if that monster sucked the life force out of Mistress Marone's body and stored it within this. You say monster, but wasn't it some kind of magical creature? See, there's a red jewel here. All creatures brought to life by alchemy have a red jewel like this that is used as their catalyst and it is set into their bodies or so i've heard hmm a magical creature huh mel what do you think if you've got any ideas Let's hear them, no matter what they are. Mel told them about the numerous encounters she had had up to this point with those monsters called mutants. So they're magical creatures that have been called mutants, huh? If these mutants were brought about by alchemy, then the best thing that we can do is go ask questions about the place that specializes in alchemy research, the Royal Alchemia.
about the Royal Alchemia. Even though the transfer gate is now in working order, it seems like that's the one place we can't get to. Hmm. Well then, let's rely on an old friend. A friend of mine opened an alchemy shop in the capital. If I ask, they might know something. Well then, let's go with the Lady Meriarde. He's not specifically calling her princess. I'm counting on you to see to Mistress Maroni's care until I return. Or I guess if I'm calling his master Lord Padre, maybe I could just call her Lady Maroni. That might work better. Hey Mel, in order to save my aunt, please lend Ferris a hand. You remember the contents of that red memory crystal, right? I want you to save my aunt. This is the wish that I have for you. To be perfectly honest, I don't remember recording that message into the crystal like that. But I'm sure it was done for the sake of this right now. I'm going to return to my room and see to my aunt's care. You should head to the capital and go after Ferris. Okay. Well, to get down to the city, we're actually, do we need to? We don't have to necessarily go back through the palace. Oh, yep, yeah, it's gonna make me. I was just gonna cube, take the cube back to town, but, uh, it's probably not gonna let me if it wants me to actually walk up to the transfer gate. Double take did that that guard, the one in with the the pink nameplate that we just passed. His name was Fargus. Like, wait a minute, you're not Ferris. Okay, where do we want to go? We can go to the capital of Keenbell, or we can go back to the Padadea estate. Uh, let's head down to Keenbell. Hey, Cran, welcome. How's it going? Hey, okay, Mel used the transfer gate and returned to the military quarter. And in order to go after Ferris, she uh, went past the gate and headed out into the city itself of Keenbell. Hello, Mel. Hi again. What are you doing down here? Thank you for listening to my request and delivering that red memory crystal. Now she remembers. I'm sure you don't realize what it is that I'm doing right now.
shall we walk a little? Your first contact was the first step toward avoiding future destruction. It's difficult to struggle against the flow of what we call fate. Even if you uh, take wholehearted action to try and change the future, in the end, the same destructive future ends up coming around. However, from within those torrents, a different flow can be reached, and there exists a branching point for the future. The important thing is to never stop moving. It may be frustrating right now, but... Please keep walking forward one step at a time toward the future that you wish for. That's the one and only way. Uh, I didn't come today because I have a request to ask. I just wanted to say thanks. And even without my asking to, you're going to help Ferris save my aunt, aren't you? And kyududu. You're there, aren't you? How does she know? Nobody knows about... Kyududu? From this point on, please be a good friend to Mel and support her. Why do you know about me? Who are you? If you wish, then the path you select will connect to the correct future. Hold it! I lost sight of her. That woman is no ordinary person. Her face looks exactly the same as the Meriade in the palace. But are they really the same person? Hmm. More importantly, Mel. Let's go after that man called Faris who went to the alchemist shop. Okay. All right, then. It is Zeph's shop that we need to go to, and there are side quests. Well. There's one side quest.
we're passing by it right now, so we might as well stop in and uh, pick it up. Emilie. Uh, hello, traveler. Yes. I understand just from the the way you carry yourself that you have come from a very far place. Hey, Oss. Welcome. How's it going? I worked at the Padodea estate uh, as the head housekeeper who served Lord Padre and Lady Marone. I was in charge of the other maids. Uh, however, with the master's whereabouts unknown, uh, we have uh, uh, many of the maids have left the house, and we've only kept enough people on staff to maintain the estate. I have been obeying my guidelines of time and have also been granted um, some free time and that is why I am living in this house right now. Uh, my, my preamble has gotten quite long, hasn't it? Uh, to tell you the truth, there is something I would like to ask of you. Have, have you been able to go to the Padorea estate? Yes, just now. Then there is something I would like to ask of you. If it's alright with you, will you listen to my request? Sure. Thank you very much. You, and you are... C, so you are Mel. I have heard from my former maid companions that uh, Lady Marone has been transferred to the palace and that there is no one in the estate any longer. The Parorea estate was a wonderful place back in its day. Or in its day, I guess it was just recently destroyed. We had a sociable and elegant life there. Everyone was so, um, uh, disciplined, or uh, everyone behaved in such a disciplined way that we were proud to live there. I assume she's mostly referring to the, the servant's way of life there. Um, I have one regret about that place. Even though it was by the guidance of my guidelines of time, as the head housekeeper, I quit my post and left everyone there. And so at very least, I wanted to leave behind for the other maids a book with all of my know-how recorded within it. Um, I put everything that I had of myself as a maid into that, and now it's just left behind in the estate with no one there, and I feel badly about it. So what I would like to ask is none other that you search for the maid's guidebook or handbook that is at the Padorea estate. No, please, I ask for your help. You know, I bet that was the, the book that it wouldn't let us do anything with. Let me 
No, it won't. Okay. So at least we kind of know where to find it. As long as the transfer gate will let us get back up there. Let's see what we need from uh, Zeph's shop, and we'll go from there. I didn't realize the two of you knew each other. Oh, if it isn't Mel, why are you here? Oh, so the two of you know each other. They do say that it's a small world. So what have you come here for, Mel? Uh, Mel told them that she was asked by Mediarde to lend Ferris a hand. Lady Mediarde, I am grateful for your consideration. I promise that I, Ferris, will save Lady Marone without fail. If that's the case, then I would most definitely like Mel to hear the rest of this, or the continuation of this story. Too. This is a story of back when you belonged to the Royal Alchemia as a researcher, right? Yes. I have actually never set eyes on the magical creature called a mutant that was the owner of this horn. However, I will never forget this glow. At that time, in the research rooms, there were repeated experiments to test saving human life energy into the jewels uh, that were brought about by alchemy. The jewels that had that life energy stored within them had the same glow as this horn's jewel has. So what happens once the life energy is sucked out? Don't tell me. That is something that I don't know. At that time, the research was, or I guess that um, field of research was only in its beginning stages, and there were still many parts to it that were unknowns. That being said, it has been quite a long time since I left that place, so right now they have likely made a lot of progress um, in their results or in figuring it out. If you wish to know more details about the research on uh, life energy, then the best way is to ask the current head researcher, who is the, we say, the current director of Alchemia. So in the end, we've got to go to the Royal Alchemia, huh? 
The reason we came to ask you was because the transfer gate isn't in working order and we've got no way to get there. I see. Well, in that case, why don't you try asking at the director's house? If you're in luck, you may be able to meet with him. At the director's house, huh? If he had returned from the Royal Elk Armia, then that would be of help to us. Hmm. All right, how about this? I will search for a way to get to the Royal Alchemia without having to go by transfer gate. I'm sorry, Mel, but would you please call in on the house of the director of the Royal Alchemia? Jeez, oh, he's as hasty as usual. Well then, Mel, I shall tell you where you can find Director Yonge's house. The house of Director Yonge. What's this? Zeph, did you say Yonge just now? Oh, don't tell me you're going to introduce Mel to Yonge. Don't, don't, not that guy. Hey again, Dinka. How's it going? <laughs> Come now, Dinka. It's... Going too far to call someone in a position such as that, that guy. Because whenever that pervy old man makes a request from the shop, uh, I always need to go deliver it and he just stares at my chest the whole time. Well then, that would be a good opportunity for you to change into some less exposing clothes and wear something more... It says humble, but I guess something that covers you up more. Zeph, that is not the answer. You are in the wrong here. Huh, I'm done with this. This is no good. We've gotten off track of the topic at hand. Uh, concerning Director Yonge's house, it's in the opposite quarter from where we are right now. It is to the northwest of the central part of the city. <laughs> Vinka, I'm on your side here. Um, why not? There don't seem to be any other side quests to pick up just yet. We'll keep checking.
Here we go. Uh, I guess let's talk to Mamarubon. Ah, uh, what's that? Where is Director Yonge? That's what I'd like to ask. I'm in a bit of trouble right now. I work here as the housekeeper and Mr. Yonge hasn't come home for the longest time. Ah, uh, I'm worried about what I'll do for this month's pay. There have been many times previously where he stays cooped up in the research area for days at a time and doesn't come home, but this is the first time that he hasn't come home in this long of a time. Uh, a letter that I left in his study on the second floor is still sitting on his desk untouched, so it's not that he hasn't returned at a time when I wasn't here. Uh, hmm. Well, that's... Sounds like he's probably stuck there. I'm just taking a look around. Bookshelf? Nothing. Just the one one door. Okay, so this must be his the director's room. Well that's different. I see. It was an underwear catalog. Not gonna go into any more detail than that. Uh, there's a letter addressed to Director Yonge. Do you want to read it? Well, maybe let's not. There is a sturdy looking piece of furniture with large doors here. There doesn't appear to be a knob on it, so there's no way to open it up. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at the letter then. Uh, yes, the music fade out was because of the time of day. Okay, Mel glanced through the letter to the director. Rumors of that thing that appeared in the Bantoryu region have reached as far as the Free People's Camp. Free People's Settlement? So it seems that you are continuing that abominable research that I resigned in protest of from the Royal Alchemia. It seems that a great number of them told you that they would give you the director's seat if you continued the research. You materialist. I won't think ill of you if you immediately destroy all materials related to it and never touch that research again. Those who continue with that forbidden research will, without fail one day, receive what they put in in retaliation. Signed, Wagumika. 
Hmm. Oh, hey, Paris. So here's where you were, Mel. I'm glad we didn't uh, miss each other. Like, I left before he arrived or something. After we parted at Zeph's shop, I was searching for a way to reach the Royal Alchemia without making use of the transfer gates, but... Who would have thought that the house the director lives in would have a secret passage that connects to the Royal Alchemia hidden within it? But I don't see anything that looks like it would be something like that here. By the way, Mel, what's that you've had in your hand there? Oh, this letter? I went through his mail? Uh, and I showed it to Ferris. What is this abominable research? I'm concerned about that, but right now... Uh, let's think about who the person is that sent this letter. From the contents, we can guess that this Wagamika person that sent it used to be the director of the Royal Alchemia. Or once served long ago as the director of the Royal Alchemia. From the investigation that I did, I found that previous eras of the directors for the Royal Alchemia all lived in this house during that time period. I guess while they were the director. So of course this former director, or the previous director, Waganika, would have lived here. So we could think that they would know about the secret passage. If we can't meet with the current director, then one option is to ask the previous director about where this passage is. According to this letter, right now Wagamika is living in the Free People's Settlement. All right. Going to set out right away to visit. Pay it a visit. I recall the Free People's Settlement is in the eastern part of the Tiparone Heights region. I'm gonna go on ahead. Uh, you should follow after me as quickly as possible. It's the Free People Settlement. Got it? All right. Schiller, what are you doing? <laughs> and it seems like I did miss a room. Thanks for not picking up the treasure. Paris, Paris, I'll probably say it both ways. All right then. I don't know, that looks pretty fishy. That's probably what it is.
Okay. Anything else I need to pick up here? No? Alright. Uh, so we need to go uh, out the northeast exit to get to Tiparone. We also have a side quest out in that area, so we can take care of that along the way. And we have another quest to go up to, back up to the Padarea estate. So, let's take care of that one first. There was no place where I could save a, a cube place to there. So let's head back up to the military quarter. Yeah, the only... The only thing I really went over was that a lot of the uh, character and system settings got moved into a separate submenu in the miscellaneous or Saxon menu. Um, can I get there from this gate or do I need to go back up to the palace? Nope, I can get there. All right, let's go find that book real quick. Or, hmm. I think now would actually be... Hey, Broward! Welcome! How's it going? I think now's actually a good time for a break. So uh, I will leave you all off on this uh, very soothing melody and we'll find that book and then move on to the Tipperone Heights area when we get back. Thanks for joining me, everyone. <laughs>